Knox Palette House was inspired by a project from two architects with iBeam Design in New York and they introduced it as a solution for a refugee community. And we thought, why couldn't we do that in Knoxville, possibly with our homeless population? And while we're at it, we could build all kinds of cool structures for our city. We are going around and collecting pallets from uh, several area businesses that have been uh, gracious enough to donate us pallets. Well, the nice thing about pallets, they're kind of a waste product. Most people are willing to give them away, and some people even pay to have people haul them off. So they're uh, readily available and very cheap. We use HT stamped pallets, which means they are heat treated, not chemically treated. The design calls for 100 pallets to build an approximate 250 square foot structure. The plans from iBeam Designs, which are really fascinating, they're designed like Legos. Like if you look at the plans, it's, it looks like a Lego catalog. The problem we encountered, we have a plentiful supply of free pallets coming from Korea. And they are in metric. So our pallet house uses their footprint their building techniques, except instead of being 40 inches wide for each pallet, we're like 43 and a quarter. And instead of being 48 tall, we're like 45 and a fraction. So our size dimensions are a little different. We decided to go with Knoxville Botanical Garden and Arboretum because they were excellent to work with. They've been really supportive when we proposed the idea and it started through an interest with Rhythm and Blooms and we thought this would go great with the interactive art aspect of Dogwood Arts and day three of the festival takes place here. So as you come in, there's sort of like a, a hallway corridor and in the designs, this, this area is the kitchen. And so if we were going to finish this out, you'd put a countertop around here. This is where you could set a propane stove um, and like some sort of uh, you know, water containment device so that you could prepare food here. And here is considered the dining room. So this little area is just used a pallet to build tables. This is the living room. Uh, it's just another space where you can like lounge around. And then the loft is upstairs above the dining room. There's approximately eight foot square sleeping loft. Because of, I built the deck square, I had an extra six feet, so I actually gave the pallet house a nice deck. The beautiful thing about working with pallets such as this, uh, it reduces the amount of lumber you need for framing. Uh, if you were to frame up something like this, you'd need well in excess of 200 two by fours. But because the pallets themselves have a structural component, you really just need two by fours every 40 inches apart, or 40, in our case, 43 and a quarter inches apart uh, to, so, to hold the size of your pallet together. And then the pallet surface itself serves as a sheathing, so that it eliminates the need for a plywood sheathing. So you could go right over this with any type of siding material that you wanted. With the roof, the same thing. It's perfect for laying on a metal roof, or in the uh, actual design plans by I-Beam, uh, they use the corrugated clear plastic to allow passive lighting. We are so thankful for the volunteers that we have uh, had on this project so far. This is just the first project. After this, we will be moving on to maybe building some other projects. I think some great ideas would be guest houses, stages, playhouses for kids. Anything you can think of that we could just repurpose wooden pallets for, I think is where we'd like to go with that and sort of incorporate them into city events because it is such a great sustainable solution.